allegiance and an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for patience and understanding in our neighborhoods. We pray that we are good stewards of love to our community. We thank you for all our blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Roll call. Mr. Bryan. Here. Mr. Beck. Here. Here. Um, I move approval of the agenda. Second. So I want to move discussion of Chatham Woods up. Should I do that at this point or? Well, it's the agenda, so that's where you do it. <laughs> okay. So I move to um, move discussion of the Chatham Woods parking situation after the presentations. Okay. Good. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lee. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Okay. Um, approval or approval of fiscal officer's report. Or approval of minutes. Oh, did I do that? Miss that? Uh, move approval of minutes, regular minutes of October 4th, 2022. Sorry. Second. I'm ahead of myself. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Brown. Abstain. Mr. Beck. Aye. Um, now I move approval of fiscal officer's report. Okay. Our checking, our checking account balance stands at $8,653,229.65. The HRA account balance is $6,485.02. Our meter investment account is at $8,215,994.67. Uh, revenue to date is twelve million sixty seven thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and ninety two cents revenue budgeted twelve million four hundred and twenty eight thousand seven hundred and ninety five dollars appropriations for twenty twenty two thirteen million seven hundred twenty six thousand six hundred twelve dollars and forty cents expenditures to date nine million seventy seven thousand $315.45. <clears throat> Payments that were made in October total $868,903.48. Uh, so our major fund balances, uh, the general fund is at $2,925,000 $33.33. $33 33 the park levy, $649,000. $974.31. The Rossi Park Levy, $676,009.14. The Police Levy, $1,085,000, $85,247.71. The Fire Levy, $785,522.48. The road levy, $315,532.39. The safety services levy, $3,723,003.52. Uh, the ARP fund is at $1,241,841.36. Tax in increment financing fund, Two million nine hundred seventy-seven thousand three hundred and four dollars, three hundred seven dollars and seventy-six cents. Total of all funds totals sixteen million eight hundred and fifty-eight thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars and nineteen cents. Any questions? Okay, roll call. Miss Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Okay, now we're at presentations. I think we have Jen Giroux, the candidate for House Representative of the 27th, 27th District. Hello, welcome. Hi. Very good. Please yes, come up. Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you can move it. <laughs> I need a stepping stool or something. So my name is Jen Giroux. I'm the Republican nominee for the 27th District. Um, 
I'm, I'm a mother of nine, grandmother of six. I've always been kind of behind the scenes working on various issues that affected my family and in politics, but this is the first time I'm a candidate. And I will say I had no clue what was I was biting off <laughs> when it comes to all the mudslinging that's been going on. But I've been trying to stay on the issues because honestly, um, my youngest just graduated from college. And in the last couple of years, I was propelled to get into the race scene, basically what looked like a country in free fall to me. Regardless of your politics, I don't want my children and grandchildren growing up in this um, wave of wokeism. And um, I see out of control crime and problems with the education of trying to keep parents out of that. And, um, you know, adjustments with letting people out of jail, uh, jail with, you know, repeat offenders out of jail without bail. And a lot of things that affect our families. And I want my children to want to stay here and raise their children. And so I decided to jump into the race and won the primary. I am very, very hopeful that I'll be your next representative. I have the full endorsement of Tom Brinkman. And I really just wanted to come and say hello and let you know that I will be available to you as your state rep to try and connect you with whatever needs you have from Columbus, while also saying I have a lot to learn, so you guys would also be a great resource for me, I hope. Um, your dad is an icon in this city, and your sister yeah. and I went to nursing school together, so oh, I just you. made you yes. connect those dots. Mm -hmm. So I am a registered nurse. My husband and I are small business owners. We own the Catholic shop down in Madeira. It's been 24 years that we've been there for that. I have a special needs daughter, so I also know that perspective of parents that um, deal with that in terms of the education system and services. So I think that um, a number of experiences in my past has prepared me maybe for this moment. I'm hoping the voters agree, and I appreciate this opportunity to say hello to all of you. I do have the endorsement of um, the Fraternal Order of Police, the 112 and 69, and I have always been a supporter of the police and first responders, and um, it pains me to see when the public doesn't, we don't see that on TV with the public and all that. So happy to take any questions, but if not, I just appreciate the opportunity to be here with everyone here. Any questions? We appreciate you coming this evening yes. and just want to say uh, <clears throat> we have appreciated uh, Tom Brinkman's help. You did a great job. Uh, we really worked level. well together. So hopefully mm -hmm. if you get in, we can work well with you. He was yes. very good for the township. Yes, he's been super supportive in helping me uh, as he's also running for auditor. So hopefully yes. we'll keep him in the loop, you know, being able to help people in Hamilton County. But yes, I, I've been trying to get him to have a little meetings with me about the various aspects of the district as they keep changing the district. And I, my husband and I are actually oh, new oh. residents of Tewilikers two weeks oh, ago. Okay. <laughs> it's really fun moving in. <laughs> well, but, which, um, which part, Montgomery or Sims? Um, I think she's in Sims. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sims. Yes. Right. Yeah, Sims. So yeah. she's our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Sims Town. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I had to make sure I was in Sims when we moved here. Yes. So it was Actually, ironic. Tom told me that. Tom yeah, me so that. I, um, I was in that little, I don't want to take too much time up, but I, I registered for state rep when they moved it to August. And so they kept me off the ballot. I didn't think they were going to let me on. And then we went to a court hearing, and I was literally in between houses when they let me on July 1st. So I only had 32 days to win the primary, and we still haven't unpacked our boxes. So anyway, <laughs> I'm happy to be out here. We're enjoying the area already, but it's Good. been a crazy run, and I hope it ends with a victorious uh, night next Tuesday. So ask for all your vote. If you'd consider voting for me, I'd appreciate it. And I also want to say... Is it okay? I don't want to offend you if I leave to go to another stop with oh, only no, six absolutely. days of the campaign to go. <laughs> yeah. yes. But um, I you don't want to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> but I truly am available, and um, my website, um, if you want my phone number is on there. Actually, Rachel, I'm going to give them my card in case anybody needs to call me. I'll give you my. Okay. But appreciate right. your time and put me on the agenda tonight. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for coming. Good luck to you. Okay. Good luck. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, moving on, we have Gage Bradford, the Solid Waste District Plan Update. Hello. Hello. Good question. I'm glad I found the place. I may have written down the wrong address when I left the office. Thanks for having me, Community Specialist for Hamilton County Resource, which is formerly the Recycling and Solid Waste District, rebranded but uh, same purpose, same mission, helping communities, schools, businesses, and everyone in between send less waste to the landfill by way of recycling, reuse, composting, all that good stuff. 
So we're making the rounds to all the 48 political jurisdictions in the county just to give an update on where we are at in the Ohio EPA mandated 15 year solid waste plan for the county. We have to update that plan every five years and have it voted on um, by all 48 political jurisdictions. Last time we went out for this five years ago, we did get 100% approval, including Sims Township, so we're aiming for that again. Uh, but I wanted to, before I get into any tweaks we made in the, in the updated plan, I wanted to make sure that some of our current programs are understood. Uh, so we do do about a million dollars, if not a little bit more, in grants throughout the county every year. Uh, some, some are annual, some are one-offs, but I think the annual residential recycling incentive uh, grant program, SIMS gets every year and applies for, I think the last payout for SIMS was around $12,000. And that's used, um, it's supposed to be used to funnel back into your recycling or composting initiatives to help uh, relieve some of that financial burden. But other programs, we have a full-time sheriff uh, in the county dedicated to illegal dumping and environmental crimes in, in any community. So if that's an issue, uh, please get a hold of me or ask me questions uh, after, after I'm finished with this. That's probably one of probably one of the programs that touches every single community, whether it's you know a high recycling rate community or not. Everyone seems to be dealing with serious litter, if not illegal dumping issues. So we're we're proud to be funding that program, um, and we also have recycling and yard trimmings drop off programs throughout the county. Three locations for yard trimmings. Uh, one over here, kind of close. I think I think I Googled it. It's a 20-minute ride from here, but still some some service to your community. Free to any Hamilton County resident that's trying to get rid of leafs, yard trimmings, things of that nature. Um, Where is that located? I think the clo we've got three, and I think the closest <coughs> one to here is at Bezac Landscaping, um, if that rings a bell. Yes. Mm -hmm. I could provide the exact address okay. on a follow-up. Um, but that is open almost 365 days a yeah. year and open to all Hampton County residents. Uh, as I said, last time we did get 100% approval. Um, but we are required to get at least 60% approval by population. Otherwise, the EPA will have to come in and basically create the county's plan for us. Um, so we will likely ask you guys to ratify that in January. Uh, so, you know, just that's the, that's the rough timeline. Speaking of the residential recycling incentive grant that I mentioned you guys got about $12,000 for in the last cycle, that funding is going to maintain itself throughout this plan's cycle. Um, and the only serious tweaks to that program is we are going to, in the name of equity, implement a kind of minimum threshold payout to any community because it's unfortunately became a little bit of rich, get richer, poor, stay poorer kind of program. The communities that aren't doing well with recycling or diverting waste from the landfills aren't really getting any kickbacks from this grant because their numbers are bad, so they can't reinvest in those programs. That, that minimum number is gonna be somewhere in between two and $5,000, so it's, it's not really gonna affect uh, SIMS and, and the money that's been coming to this community really at all. Uh, in my opinion. And I think lastly on, on major updates um, or variations from the last plan update we did, our business assistance programs are going to get a bump in funding annually from $145,000 to $245,000 um, and that's excluding grants that could be um, given to businesses. So that's just for business waste diversion programs. Um, so, uh, lastly, my apologies. So this was not required by us at all, but we did bring in a, a local company 
that focused on diversity, equity, inclusion, and worked with us hand and foot throughout the process of, of creating the update, just to make sure that our programs weren't slanted towards certain geographic areas or demographics. Um, so we're proud of that. We're making sure everybody knows that. We invested a lot of money for that company to come in and, and watch over our shoulders while we were uh, creating the plan. So we just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Um, and I'll happy to be, be happy to answer any questions, but other than that, I can provide um, just some brief updates on paper for you guys. Okay. And I'm available any day of the week for follow-ups beyond this evening. Okay. okay. Quick question. Gage, thanks for coming. Um, good information. Sorry it took me so long to get out here. <laughs> it's a, that's okay. Um, just logistically, how we have a lot of businesses in Sims Township. How do we communicate or how do you communicate with them relative to the business waste uh, diversion? Yeah, so our team is small, but we, uh, I'm the community specialist. We do have an education specialist. We do have a business specialist. So we, we like to get out to chambers, for example, and uh, bring up to speed all the businesses, different programs we have, whether that's uh, grant funding for businesses that may be trying to get a cardboard compactor or we had a food pantry recently uh, get some grant funding from us for um, a freezer uh, a, a big freezer thing so they could store more food therefore sending less to landfill um, but we've got internship programs we've got more simplistic programs if a business or a bar is wanting to recycle inside of their inside of their business we'll provide completely free bins signage things of that nature for any interior recycling needs so it it varies from what type of business you are um, when you're looking through the lens of how to divert more waste from the landfill or recycle more or compost more you know there's landscaping businesses and there's bars two mm -hmm. very different routes to cutting down their waste right mm -hmm. but we're always happy to come out and speak to um, specific businesses that reach out uh, to us directly or to entire chambers and be more general with our approach okay and thank I you. could set that up pretty easily good thank you okay wonderful thank you Thank you for the time. Where should I leave the one? You can give it to Cam. No, so we won't actually ask for ratification until the new year. Okay. Um, but the full plan for those of you who are curious about a 15 year, 300 page solid waste plan is on our website, uh, which you can find in here as well. Okay. So, and contact information as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Okay. We've um, moved up the discussion of Chatham Woods, so why don't we go ahead and start that. I'm going to let our fire chief, because we sent them out there to do some measuring. So, Steve, you want to look at this while he talks? You guys can kind of share it. Cause yeah. I don't there's know another it. one if you'd like. Yeah, there's another one so you understand. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, board. Uh, we were asked to uh, evaluate the entrance to Chatham Woods subdivision, and we have done that and based that upon the Ohio Fire Code. Uh, with the island entrance there, uh, the island to the curb is 12 feet 15 uh, and 12.09 on the south side. So there cannot be any parking on either side of the island, and there has to be allowed for turning radius for the fire apparatus on either side of the island. Mm. So with looking at that and evaluating that, um, is, it is our determination that from the entrance of the first yeah, okay. residence on the north back to Rich Road on both sides of Chatham Woods, um, should be marked as a fire lane to allow for apparatus um, egress into that subdivision. So what you're saying is if there's a car parked on those side, a, a fire truck can get through. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. And then, so why hasn't this been done in the past? Is well, gen generally it has been the position of the township that we have the least amount of enforcement possible to accomplish what needs to be to allow 
the subdivisions of residents to have quiet enjoyment of the subdivision um, when, when issues come to our attention. And until they started the, the issue of parking here, um, whatever, for whatever reason, um, I believe it's because of picking up and dropping off students from the high school. Now we have cars parked there where we were not having that to the extent that we're having that now um, before. Um, generally, um, we don't go through the entire township and say all the fire hydrants side of the streets are going to be um, fire or are going to be fire lanes. So we, we try to have the least amount of, um, uh, of legislation necessary to accomplish that. Again, to give them the quiet enjoyment. Of the, um, but when um, you know when we have the issues like we have now with the parking issues, that becomes a problem. And we do have, um, we do what we have, what we call frequent flyers in that subdivision. So we're there frequently, um, for, especially for ambulance calls into that subdivision. Uh, I'll give you a good example of how we normally try to, to handle it. Is we just had an issue in Terwilliger's where they were having a car party on Tuesday mornings that were blocking <coughs> both sides of the street. And there were 25 to 30 cars there. So we worked with the homeowners association. They got with the homeowner. The homeowner agreed to have everybody start carpooling it and uh, parking up at the safety center and carpooling down there to, without blocking the street. So that kept us from being, needing to put in a fire lane because they were complying. And I don't think that's going to be the case here. Okay. Because I don't think that the subdivision um, or the homeowners association has control over the people who are causing the problem because I don't believe they're residents. Okay. So that being said, Please come up and um, if you have any comments, questions, whatever, anything you want to say, just, just say name, address, any good stuff. Hello. Hello. Uh, Scott Drapeau. I live in Chatham Woods. And on the picture there, if you go to page two, my home is the corner of Windy Hill and Chatham Woods and the, with the pool in the backyard there, so the corner lot. And it's got the primary issue with the parking out front. And probably much to your surprise, I'm here in support of no parking regulations. No parking no regulations. No parking regulations. And can I clarify with you for a second? Uh, was the fire lane going to be from the uh, northern house, Mr. Murray's house, or from the driveway of the news, which is the southern corner? Okay. On, on the northern side of the street, it would be at the uh, eastern side of the north driveway. Eastern side of the north driveway. So encompassing just the one driveway, the news on the south, that would be encompassed in the fire lanes. That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> I know he would, uh, if, as long as it's that point, he does occasionally pull out and park back a little further back there on, on certain times when he's got, he's got a camper and things that he's got in his garage and he pulls out and he needs the space to do that. So that, uh, just for him, for his information, I just want to clarify that. Anyway, so the, the crux of the problem is the lack of the busing at the high school. So unfortunately, the funding at the high school where, where the busing was discontinued has created the problem of parents needing to pick up their children that were underage to drive. So um, not sure if everyone's aware, but the rich road between 235 and 250 becomes impassable. When parents are picking up their children at the high school there, they will stop on both sides of the road in order to pull through what is the accepted pick up and drop off location for the high school students. So there's actually probably more of a fire safety concern as far as Rich Road being impo impassable between 235 and 250-ish uh, because of cars actually parked and sitting there. So for, for me, I, I, have, I generally will come out and I take a right and go around, around the issue to avoid it anytime I come out of the house after 225 or so. so the, the issue being is that we have 15 or so, plus or minus two every day, 15, you know, 13 to 17 parents who have found an alternative means not to get involved in that crush on Rich Road out there and have their children walk into our neighborhood and, and pick them up there. The problem really encompasses 20 minutes. It's a 20 minute a day issue. And really in the middle of that, there's really only 10 minutes where you have anywhere near 12 to 15 cars in there simultaneously. So there's a few cars that roll in at, at the 35 after, and there are a few cars that there's children a little later getting over there that roll out as past 50 after. So 
really from 40 to 50, you've got 12 to 14 cars that at least eight of them will line up around my house and then they'll push a little further to the west up Chatham Woods on the eastbound side, eastbound lane, so they're pointing out to exit. Um, these, keep in mind these are parents. These are not students waiting for other students. The students are respectful when they come over and get into cars with their parents. They're not out there being ruckus, making a ruckus or noise or fighting or anything like that. The parents are not out there blasting their music. They're not driving recklessly. It, it, from what I see, and I'm home uh, many afternoons, I'm a pilot, so I have weird working hours, so I am home many afternoons between 2.30 and, and 3 o'clock. Uh, and so I, I witness what's going on out there, and at no point do I see any of the dangers that are being addressed as far as you know reckless driving or near accidents. Does it get tight through there for a few minutes? Absolutely, not going to deny it. But so does every street in the city that has that, that size street if there's parking on one side of it. Um, Many of, the, many of our smaller communities that don't have as large an uh, area, the streets are narrower and parking on one side because they don't have park long driveways and things like that. So it's an issue everywhere. And that's an issue everywhere all the time. And we're not putting parking restrictions up on those, on those areas. So the, the detriment to the homeowners that directly impacted there, I think for the timeline we're talking about, we're talking less than 45 hours a year total. If you add up 20 minutes a day times 180 days, Plus or minus, not, they're not in school every day. Uh, testing season, though, not everybody goes to school. So it's not even as many as a 180 day problem. So with that in mind, I would, I would encourage the uh, trustees to either A, uh, let me back that up. Uh, the school levy that is supposed to be uh, voted on next week, the Loveland School Board has committed to that if it passes, to reinstate busing. So I would really encourage the trustees not to make any commitment today until at minimum we have a result of the levy. Um, imposing parking restrictions if it no longer becomes necessary and putting a burden upon the home, you know, five to seven homeowners there that we can't park out in front of our own homes would seem completely unnecessary if the busing comes back. Now the fire lane restriction, I, I certainly understand that. It's, it's been evaluated and complained about. It is what it is. I, I certainly get that. So, um, second off, I have a video, you know, live data of, you know, the parking situation. I have an 18 minute video that I shot last Friday showing a respectful, coordinated pickup program, basically. Um, I would either offer up that I can email that to all of you. I'd also offer up that I'm more than happy to put a live streaming cam on the top of my house there and let you watch it every day for a week, right? <laughs> you know, if you want to log in and, and watch the chaos, which is not chaos, go on for your own. I'm, I'm happy to do that, or I will record that and send it to all. So that there are some live data points being looked at, not just emotional homeowners arguing, you know, this, so you can see for yourself. Or come join me. I'm home tomorrow on Friday. <laughs> we'll sit in the driveway, have a beer if you want, and we can watch watch the chaos ensue, which, which it does not. So I just respectfully ask that uh, no parking restrictions are. Um, Put into Chatham Woods no additional parking restrictions other than the fire lane uh, requirements that we've already addressed, and that uh, maybe we just back down and take a few more data points and uh, wait for A, at least the levy, and B, maybe we watch some video or we take some video, unedited video that we can actually see for yourselves and come to a, a conclusion on your own that way. So, I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. And any questions? I think. It would be nice somehow to get a copy of the video that you took. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll just get to have your that. emails and I'll have to find out. It's 18 minutes long. I'll have to find how to condense it and make sure it comes across and doesn't get chopped out. But I'll figure those details out. Okay. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can post it on YouTube there someplace. I'll, I'll figure those details out and get you all the information on that and so that you guys can see. Um, you know, it's not professional. I did drive by in the afternoon. It was about 2.35. I was coming home from work and I just picked up the phone super quick as I went by the line of traffic stops on Rich Road. So there was already, the northbound traffic on Rich Road was already backed up 15 cars at that point in time at 2.35. So nothing was going by northbound Rich Road at 2.35 for 20 minutes. So I will get that video to you and if you guys are interested in the live stream or any other recordings, I'm happy to do that for you. Just, so uh, I have a couple questions. Sure. So I, I've heard that there's been almost knockdown blows come out there that people have been fighting and, and uh it's the knockdown blows it's uh, the email chain uh loses tone loses context and is a very poor way to communicate um 
People are emotional, they have emotional reactions. You know, for example, we have a, one person in the neighborhood is very concerned about their teenage son. I thought we were talking about a small child at some point to discover it was a teenage son that actually doesn't have a seventh period class, so he comes home before the end of school, and then he's a manager for one of the athletic teams, and so he's leaving the neighborhood at that time. So he's driving. He's driving, yes. Okay. And he leaves the neighborhood to go back into the school parking lot where everybody's coming out of. I'd be far more afraid of him going to the parking lot than I would for the 15 parents lined up around the edge of our, you know, a few of our streets for a few minutes. Um, I would suggest to that homeowner that possibly he changes hours and he go in a little sooner before <laughs> or after to avoid the heavy impact of traffic. So as far as the blows, uh, I'm not familiar with that. I do apologize I wasn't here sooner. My schedule didn't allow me to attend last month meeting. I know we've gotten way down the road now. So I certainly understand that. But as far as the blows and things like that, um, the email chain has gotten quite contentious. Um, you know, for those of us at the other end that have, are looking at the direct impact on our world more more directly, because the signs are going to go, the signage is going to go in our yards. The impact to our parking and, and our for us to have friends and family and you know contractors over. You know, it becomes a little more passionate issue that you've got someone that's up the neighborhood that's just upset with a little clog in front of the neighborhood for 15 minutes in the afternoon. You become a little more impassioned by it. So, as far as blows, I'm not familiar. I do know the email chain gets ugly. So, okay. Um, and that's regret regrettable. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Hello. Hello. My name is John Cummins. I'm also a resident of Chatham Woods. Um, I live on the cul-de-sac a little ways up, uh, so I have a different perspective. Uh, follow up. Uh, Scott did a, a very thorough, accurate presentation of what I've witnessed. I retired earlier this year, and so uh, there have been a number of times where I forget. <laughs> and either leave or I'm returning at, at, during that about half hour period. And it's a little chaotic. It's also chaotic when there's a basketball game, a theater event at the school, football Friday. Um, so, uh, the, you know, the, this is just something that's a little additional on top of that. Um, it, it is, uh, as Chief pointed out, and, and am I correct in understanding, because I am coming into this a little late, uh, there will, it is the position of the um, fire chief that we are going to have uh, uh, no parking because it's a fire lane uh, at the beginning of the neighborhood? That's, is what, that, that's what you're recommending? Okay. Um, I mean, it, it is a very narrow entryway, and, um, but it could be an inconvenience to the two homeowners on either side, uh, one of whom is here, Mr. Mary, saw that him speak to that but simply as a as a neighbor who drives in and out um, it's it, it's a, a slight inconvenience as it is waiting in line on Rich Road to try to turn in if you come in at the wrong time or try to leave slight inconvenience I haven't noticed anything dangerous um, as far as the emails in the neighborhood I believe there's approximately 90 homes in the HOA and this might be one or two of the homeowners who are not behaving as uh, I, you know, as they probably should to their neighbors, and certainly toward the volunteer board members, especially to the president, who does a fantastic job uh, with the HOA. So um, I too believe that it, it would be in the best interest of our neighborhood not to have more signs go up. If there were a way to simply ask these people not to be parking so close to the entrance. Um, without it becoming another issue, that would be great. Um, but I know how sometimes people choose not to listen. They did have the option to go across the street to the park. It's a big parking lot there. Um, but uh, they've all made their decisions where to go. Um, but if there were a way that the township could find to simply have somebody with authority perhaps recommend that they not be so close to the entrance, that might reduce some of the problems uh, with it. But the bottom line is they're not willing to wait in line to go through the school as everybody else is. And so that is causing a headache with perhaps a risk of something happening, but it hasn't yet in our neighborhood. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? 
<clears throat> just that you're touching on the the point um, aside from the 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 fire lane area that we've talked about um, coming up with with a rationale to ask people to move move on and we've had a lot of internal discussion this last month about that um, you know if it's no no uh, no stopping no standing you know the definition of a parked car which uh, I was very surprised about personally that if you have your car in park it's not a parked car um, so and and having the authority to be able to you know make people move um, and, and not even necessarily giving tickets we're not that's not what we're interested in we're not promoting that um, we just are trying to promote a safe environment and Neighbor. and try and respond to the the neighbors that have raised this issue um, so one option that we had been kicking around and I know we got a lot of input from various neighbors on, via email um, was doing a, a no now I'm gonna get it wrong but no stopping no from standing. certain hours in the morning and certain hours in the afternoon uh, apparently we you know the input we've received uh, we are not able to technically enforce that but kind of to your point I mean and I realize I'm making error in judgment here because I'm assuming people will act reasonably. But if I were in that car and um, Officer Tar came up and you know I rolled the window down or whatever, and he said, you know, we've got a situation here. We, you know, we're going to let this slide today. Just get your child. But tomorrow, will you please go over to Phillips Park? That's what it's for. I would do that um, because he asked me to point blank um, but I guess you know we can't control everybody I don't know how people would respond I don't know. we're just in this predicament yes. yes and we're trying so if the sheriff would ask that and then they they aren't compliant then what do we do <laughs> and so it's it's a very um, interesting I would say dilemma that we're in because your neighborhood's so split. Like prior when we had the other parking, no parking signs put up, like everybody was like on board and like yep. that's what they wanted. And this seems to be so contentious. So we're, we're trying to make the decision that's best for everybody, which is very hard to do in this situation. Yes. I think as a, one of the non right up front homeowners, I, you know, the, the general consensus from people I've been talking to is that it is an inconvenience. We'd like to see these cars not clogging things up. There is a slight risk that something could happen. We don't want that to happen in our neighborhood, um, but it's but we understand why, and um, uh, you know we understand how the township's hands are somewhat tied on taking certain actions, um, but. At the same time, uh, from what I can tell, it's really only a couple people who are really raising this as a strong issue and, and you know, in, in some ways going too far on their, their comments. So if we would come up with no parking from seven to nine or two to four on school days, that, that's something that you would not want. Like if we had signs that said that. I'm sorry, my, I can't figure out how to turn off my iPad and it keeps beeping. I think, it, again, uh, is it, referring to Mr. Drapeau, um, if the levy doesn't pass and, and, you know, down, and then we have to deal, keep dealing with this for at least a year or two longer, um, that would be something we, I guess, need to talk about more. But I would agree with Mr. Drapeau. We'd ask the township to wait to see what the results are and um, to keep listening to input to really get more evidence he'll be able to provide you some also um, as to what we're really dealing with and and 
Um, you know, perhaps there is a way just if, and, and, and I, I wouldn't tell the township how to do this, but just if there were a way to have law enforcement somehow encouraging people without appearing to have the color of law coming down on them hard, simply to please, this, this is a crowded uh, beginning of a neighbor, neighborhood, um, to simply move out of the way or please go across the street, maybe that could help. But. So I have a question for you, Ott. Is it possible that the fire department go up there and say, you can't park here because if we need to get through, we can't? No. So you can't do anything? No, we don't enforce. Okay. The sheriff's office enforces, and they can only enforce if we have a resolution uh, for that. So, um, you know, unfortunately, we can't. I say it's like a fire hazard. You can't do that. And that and I understand, <laughs> trying to understand what you're saying, but yeah. um, been in this business for a very long time. I can tell you that putting our police department out there with that mission is really unfair and unrealistic to them. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Uh, one additional point, sorry, I don't know. Uh, yes, here. I, uh, we had a, an officer out there today and uh, just listened to their feedback. Are they going to generate a report or provide their, their update on what kind of safe, what kind of real safety it is, or, or, or have you communicated with them? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah we well, that was Deputy Copeland. We spoke this afternoon uh, after he left. Um, so, yeah, he's relayed to me what he saw. Okay, are you, are, you, are you willing to share with it, or is this the what we've, we've, we've been out there multiple times, and I've relayed to Kim and the trustees we, what we've seen, and we just haven't seen any safe any safety concerns. Uh, we really saw what you spoke of, um, nothing that would cause us to approach, you know, certainly if we saw a safety issue, cars speeding through the street, cars blocking streets, um, we just haven't seen what's being, what we're being asked to go out and look for. Um, I, I understand. You know some people's frustration that you have some some people in your neighborhood but um as far as actions that are causing safety concerns we just have not seen that and that that's to my point it's an it's an inconvenience but it's not a safety issue mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. thank you all for your time thank you thank you john Appreciate thank you it. thank you <laughs> I'm Steve Mary. Hi, Steve. Uh, first resident on the right. First driveway on the right. North fire, side. Fire lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you are. All right, here we go. So it, it is interesting. There are some safety issues. My wife has seen one, oh, probably about a month ago. Two ladies that were leaving in cars stopped at the stop sign, got out of their cars, went across the median, and were hollering at kids in our front yard. Don't know what it was about. Nancy was ready to dial 911. Uh, she was watching this from the, our front window. Were these residents of your subdivision? No. They people picking up their kids. Most likely. Okay. Pe people picking up their kids. They had some kind of issue. I don't know what the kids did. Didn't break out into a fight, but they were face to face, and Nancy was ready to to call the sheriff's office. Um, it broke up. They got back because they were blocking. The, you know, the outbound, the eastbound lane out of the subdivision, these two cars. Uh, so that lasted for, you know, a minute or so. And so there are some issues that the other issue that's the safety issue is people pulling in. And if their child is close to the entrance, they'll just stop in that lane going into the subdivision. Kids pile in the car, then they go up and turn around and by Scott's house or up to Sugarwood and then come back out. So <coughs> there are cars coming and stopping unexpectedly, you know, as they enter the subdivision. That does happen, not every day, but it does happen. So there are some issues, and that's the kind of thing that's got some of the residents um, upset. And I'm on the one of the board members of the Homeowners Association, so I've got a lot of emails. I'm sure you have, Kim. I know you've gotten many emails. <laughs> um, so there are some of those issues that have been exacerbated, and that's why we, we get all the, the, the emails. But, um, as a board of the Homer Association, we're, we're certainly trying to get information out. Um, thanks, Kim, for sending that email about whether you can park or stand and what's enforceable and that. So I think mm -hmm. that helped our, our folks to understand what can be done. Um, as, a, as I said before, if the cars would park a little bit farther from the intersection, it would certainly make it a little bit easier to get in and out and probably a little bit safer. Um, I know the news across the street from us, uh, first house on the other side, 
They don't want a no parking either, because I think it's on Tuesday nights, they have a group of people that meet at their house and, and, and park there along the street, usually five or six cars. Um, and so that, you know, is, if we could never park there, that would be an inconvenience, certainly at certain times of the year when we have guests at our house or the, the news do on a, on a weekly basis. Um, so as, as you were saying before, uh, Jody, the, um, the existing signs farther up the subdivision, because kids were parking farther up the subdivision a year or so ago, we put up no parking eight to one school days. And that solved that problem. Now with the lack of busing, you know, they, you have more parents waiting for their kids there. So if, if we put up more signs, such as no parking, and I know you can't necessarily in, uh, enforce the standing, but if it said no parking or no standing, or both on school days, and it could be from one to three, probably would, would more than take care of the problem, there would be people that would look for other options. So even if you probably could enforce everything about the standing, yeah, there would, would probably be other options that would probably alleviate the problem enough that it, wouldn't, it would be less a problem than it is today. And you're not seeing a problem in the morning. This is just in the afternoon. Just in the afternoon. afternoon. So we wouldn't even need to put seven to not hurt. Seven yeah, to right, right. We just be right. The existing signs say eight to one. They could be much shorter time shorter, frame yeah. uh, in the afternoon. It's, it's not a morning problem. It's just an afternoon. So it's, you know, and it varies day to day. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's not as bad, it's calmer uh, than other days, it's heck. So if we would put those signs, how far up would you need those signs? Mm -hmm. The this existing sign right now is just past uh, my neighbor's house. So it's between the second and third house, just past Windy Hill on going westbound and eastbound it's one other one and house so the west. those are the signs for no parking from eight to one. Correct. Yeah. Eight okay. to one. Okay. So there's signs so. by your house that say that. Just up past Kadaka's yeah. house. The okay. next house between the second and third house. I thought they were Sherbrooke, all the way up towards uh, the top. Yeah, the by first the one I just took a picture of it this afternoon. It's okay. kind of interesting, but we we have been out there taking pictures and so on during that time frame. They're not videos. They're just pictures. Yeah, we have. And what I found enlightening was that the people who were parking were parking on the side with the signs. They park on both sides. Okay. Up the street. In this particular case, when we took all the pictures, uh, everyone was parked on the north side. I don't okay. see any on the and, south and side. And residents, because uh, residents were informed at the time that enforcement was going to be on resident complaint only. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. whether that's true Yeah, or but not. if those signs said till one and here it is two to three, you know, the, the sign's meaningless anyway. Yeah, that so we would need just need to change well, those signs. Right, but those signs that Set are farther the up the street, if people parked up there, it would alleviate the safety concern at the intersection, mm -hmm. you know, and people blocking going okay. in and out. So, right. but <clears throat> yeah, it is. It is just a short time. It, it is, but it is most of them park in front of his house. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not of them are in front of my house, right? Okay. My dogs go nuts. And I, I, well, I'd rather have my dogs going nuts and inconvenience for the short time of day than any parking. Yeah, the, the question is, is how far do you kick the can up the road? Because there are a couple other pass-throughs for people's backyards and up. Uh, right. There's a sugar. Well, then dead sugar end wood is the, 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 the sugar is the court, and then mm -hmm. the dead end is up there. Mm -hmm. There are a couple other pass-throughs from the school. You might be just kicking the can up the road and, and moving people around, and therefore probably spreading them out a bit, and therefore alleviating some of the congestion. But how far the signage goes? Uh, yeah. yeah, the the morning signage is up. up farther up Chatham okay. and that solved that morning problem and that was just students parking and walking through the people's backyards and stuff to, to get up to the high school so hmm. that part that problem <coughs> eliminated. now it's more closer to the intersection with Richard. I think that problem also went away when the two parking lots the football stadium parking lot and what used to be the tennis parking lot were yeah. up so yeah they may have to have some more some passes. passes yeah, yeah so so that was, that's the thing we, you know, I don't think from all the emails and things that I saw, mm -hmm. people don't want fire lanes all yeah, over the Yeah, we don't, we're not you interested know, in that. Just, just the beginning, there, right? because we went, that's a no, safety no, 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 issue. Right. right. In the beginning. Yeah. So. so. So Steve, if I understand you correctly, you're advocating to switch out the existing signs with 
new signs that right. and, say and, no and, stopping or standing 1 to 3 p.m. Yeah. Same poll, same post. Could be. The, the question would be, do you, would you need one closer to the intersection to help that situation, especially on the go, going out the eastbound line? You probably so what, would. If that were fire lane, just near the, near the median or the island and some turnaround area, would that alleviate what you're saying? Well, yes, it would help alleviate that, but that would restrict other people, you know, the residents from parking anytime if it was always yeah. a no posted no fire lane okay. that nobody could ever park it. So you want the minimum fire lane and then maybe just a <clears throat> couple signs that say no parking from two to four or one to three. One to, yeah, one, three. one, well, one yeah. to three, whatever you want. <laughs> it could be as one, 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 one thirty to three, right? <laughs> yeah. And well, the, 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 the minimal, I mean minimal. The yeah. small, yeah. If, if any signs were put up, I think it would help alleviate because some parents would obey like Phil was saying if they were reasonable they would probably go to Phillips Park right. anyway so um, it should help but yeah exactly where the, the fire line has to be for I mean Sims does has some pretty large equipment um, that they can come in there but I mean at Christmas they turn right around at, at Sherwood yeah, or at, sure at, do. at <laughs> Windy Hill <laughs> and that doesn't that's, seem to be that's a problem. not the ladder truck <laughs> so, um, okay. but yeah it, it, that would be I think that would help a lot of people and help. It's not going to be a 100% solution probably right. for everybody, but mm -hmm. I think it would certainly help with some of the congestion and things. Just a just, small window of time. Just yes. so I'm clear, the signs, the existing signs are all on Chatham. Correct. Not Windy Hill. Correct. Yeah, okay. there's none on Windy Hill. No. So or sure. Yeah, the, the sign is just probably going to put four signes in my yard if we do that. And that's, I don't have that idea. Yeah, okay. right. You know, my yard has such a large frontage there that it's going to be four signs. The neighbor directly across the street will be four signs in their corner lot as well. So, um, you know, we're talking probably a lot of signage. But. Does there have to be that many signs? I mean, well, we'll have to go out and measure. Yeah. What the spacing regulations are, right? Well, I mean, the ones currently have an arrow pointing both ways. So I don't know how far that really is enforceable, but they do have an arrow pointing both ways up and down the street. So, theoretically, if you did that, you might not have to add many signs. Yeah, I don't know what, what is there, a, is there a, a limit to how far signs have to be spaced? And, I mean, because the arrow, I mean, that would be theoretically, to if you go from <laughs> down to the next intersection, then we would cover that whole area. That's something we'd have yeah, to look at. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to look that out. So, so th we'd be okay with that. Would you guys, are you okay with that? So just on Chatham Woods, switching out existing signs and, for new signs. And we well, have to do that corner. Well, it, well as long as it would cover that. Yeah, but the, the problem that we put the signs up for originally isn't necessarily going to go away, is it, without this? If we changed the signs and didn't include not that. nine to one school days, wouldn't that it open would, the door it would still, for people to come back and walk through? No, because they they would have to have their car out of there before one o'clock or whatever, you know, one thirty, whatever the sign would say, and they're still in school. They don't get out till two thirty. Okay. Two thirty five now. Yeah. So it was they still wouldn't be able to park there because their car would be there during the restricted hour. So a couple hours in the afternoon, school days would I think solve the issue. Okay. For okay. the most part. Anyway. Okay. And again, I, 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 I at least wait until 11 next week before any resolutions are passed. I mean, that, that could be the solution to the problem right there, because busing will come back. Phil made, because we... Phil made a point that it might take a while for busing to come back because they yes. gotta, they have to hire right. and train. Yeah. Well, and I, well, so... Well, have the signs removed at that point? Um, that's something that we could always look at for sure. I mean, because you're putting expense and time and money into it, to then, yeah. you know, if it's no longer necessary, if you start right. to, you know, you're certainly leaning, from what I can tell, to put signage up a significant distance, and if it hasn't been determined how far up Chatham Woods or how far down Windy Hill, or does it go, and does it have to wrap around Sugarwood Court? There are a bunch of kids that walk out through Sugarwood Court as well, and if you don't put the signage around the court there, you're just going to have your parents lining up around that court, so. Right, and I guess that's something that we would leave to build a figure out, Kim? Bill? The location of the signs? 
Yeah, how, how many, how the long we need, how the distance, is that something that... Well, well again, that's, most of that is all governed by the, the manual on right. uniform traffic control devices. So right. that, that's going to tell you okay. the size, the distance, the color, the, the but language. It, well, what it won't tell you is how far up Chatham Woods to go or how far deep to go on, on Windy Hill or how many, or if it's going to include Cor Sugar Water Court. Right. Correct. <clears throat> and that's something, I guess, that we would leave for bill to meet with i mean well I mean, ultimately the trustees are going to have to decide that because how far you'll up? have to you're for anything to be enforceable there would have to be a resolution uh and the resolution right. would state how far up? yeah you're going to have to describe okay. the the, yeah. the distance that's going to be regulated put an much. exhibit in there that exactly says, okay. right okay, okay. all right well, thank you. Thank you. But again, just so I'm clear, the, the existing signs today are only on Chatham Woods. Correct. Yeah, and you would need signs on Chatham Woods and what's the other street? Sugarwood. Well, Sugarwood is Sugar a, Wood. The, that end up I, farther to the west on right. the right. And you got Windy Hill, which is where Scott is the left. on the left, and that's closest to the intersection, you know, Rich right. Road. Right. And there's um, another subdivision farther up, Derbyshire. Street. I guess where I was coming from is. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the signs are only on one side of the street. They're on the north side, and then there's one lone sign that's on the south side near the corner. That's it. Okay. So I guess where I was coming from is does it do us any good? If we look at this as not a, we're not blanketing the whole neighborhood in one false swoop. We're just sort of doing this one step at a time. Yeah. So if step one is. Well, it'd be two steps. So step one is the limited fire lane that we talked about. Step two is wherever we have an existing sign that says, what did you say, eight to one? Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, it says eight to one. one. So we Today. take that down and we put up one that says one to three and just see yeah, how that works. Of course, it says no parking. The, the other option that I mentioned was no parking or standing, though we understand the standing is not necessarily enforceable by ticket. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> it's just a so is, is that message worth, out. Right. I guess I'm just asking, is that worthwhile to, for that approach to just simply do a sign swap on existing posts? But then they would move then, all towards Windy Hill. Potentially. Potentially they could, yes. They could. But, but then we don't have any signs on Windy. Right now, the kid. No, but uh, wherever we have an existing sign today, we just take the old sign off and put up the new sign. Those existing signs are at this point in time nowhere near where. Nowhere near to the issue. Yeah, okay, it's, so that's it's, not. It's west of where the main issue is. The current Got it. signs. Okay. So that doesn't work. Well, I mean, but you could, if you added an additional sign or two, I think it would definitely cover that whole area. I mean, the signs do have arrows pointing both directions. So the question so, is how far is it? So you would need to add a couple percent. signs on Chatham. Period. Period. To do that side. Right. And, and I think if you do that, you also eliminate the need for the fire lane because there won't ever be people parking there. Well, no, we're putting times on the signs, Steve, so. Yeah, but that's the only time that's really crowded. I understand that, but that doesn't I mean, alleviate right the safety concerns yeah. one day. But the problem is, the safety concern is brought to our attention, that people are not following the fire code. So we and take on the responsibility. I, I, I would argue that they are, that, that nobody's really parking in that zone that you're putting the fire line in, that nobody really pulls up that close ever. Um, there are some parents like he says that if their kid happens to be wandering out right there, they'll jump in just like you would any shopping mall parking lot. You know, you know, if you, if you want to wander across your kid, uh, I understand. So I don't think there are actually people parking in that proposed fire lane, Steve. You no, not, not in the median there. Not where the median. Yeah, not is. anywhere near the median. No. The, the closest they get is the news driveway, which is directly across the street from our driveway. Okay. They'll park up next to that driveway, but they still allow the news to get in and out. But it's so it's. Just west of the median area is where. Okay. So they're not, they're basically not blocking the lane each. No, no, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Okay. okay. What I'm saying is that we have received a complaint 
right. that that is occurring. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the current situation there does not meet the fire code. Okay. okay. So not placing the fire line puts that onus responsibility on the township. So if next week five people from the school or from wherever decide they want to park there and block that, then we have a problem because we've taken on that responsibility of saying we understand that the issue is here that there is a, a violation, or if you will, of the fire code and that's not doing something about it. So we just can't turn a blind eye to it. Right. So how do you look at the lane going into the subdivision? That's where the fire hydrants are on that side of Chatham Woods. So, I mean, you're not supposed to park so close to a fire hydrant, which is in my neighbor's yard. Uh, does that, how does that work with the fire lane signage? They're two totally independent things. Okay. So you can't park. So I think we're going to have to and the fire hydrant. Okay, so that's a whole different code. So you're going to have to put right. add two signs. Nice citations for that. Park in there. But you're going to do both sides. But we wouldn't do the entire side of the street. Oh, I understand. The, the street's wide enough for us to be around. Just right. um, further on north, because well, it's 35 or 35, 36 feet. Then they're all going to park in windy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's through further on into the second. Right. Then we'll have to deal with that. Now. And the fire in there should not really impede anything they would have to do with the homeowners. Because if the homeowners are parking there, they are impeded. So it wouldn't be anywhere. So the homeowners would impede the homeowners. I'm just east of your driveway, not to the left side of your driveway. Well, I was thinking, you know, if the new. Yeah. I think the fire lane will stop before your driveway. Yep. Yeah, and if, that's, if that's the case, if it's on that side, then it wouldn't impact the news. Yeah, it doesn't. But, but there'd be, the well, there'd be well, signs in this yard. Slightly, they might have to just back up to say where the transformer is. You know, yeah, right? that's if, if they have to back up to the, as so, far as the, yeah. the planter box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they might not be able to use so that first 10 feet on that, that side of their driveway. Yeah, yeah. 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 they don't want to cross them on the spot. Okay, that would be fine. And I'd like to ask the trustees to remember this. Days only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and restricted hours, so it doesn't affect with, with you having people over to enjoy your pool. Right. Yeah. So Understand. that's Chatham Woods Drive. So if we put signs on Chatham Woods Drive, that would push everybody off of that congestion, but they people might sit on Windy Hill Court, but is that going to be, is that going to still have the problem? If we push them, if we put signs going up, uh, Chatham you know, the would. The you push them away, the less likely they are to come to the neighborhood. So I, you know, if you, I, I would like to, from my perspective, because I don't want both sides of mine getting, getting restricted. If we start and, and nibble away at it, I, I, I would prefer that. I, like I say, I prefer nothing, but if we have to start, you know, the nibble effect is probably more is probably a better way to start and see see what happens do you feel comfortable with that i know you're not for mm -hmm. the science at all but i, I um, you know instead of coming down so hard if we try to solve it that way phil made that suggestion by the way if we solve it try to solve it this way and then if that doesn't work then we come back and do windy hill court the least number of signs to start i think is a, is a good way yeah. to begin Appreciate your patience in uh, going along with us to see how this might work itself out. And, and it'll push so it won't be so congested. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do we have, we have an Bill, immediate Bill's issue in the environment? <laughs> he did it. That we want to do it. And then the other one, I'm getting the message that we really want to wait until after the election before we take any action on some of the signs. I suggested that I think in the very beginning, and I don't. I think we were met with a lot of opposition to that but from the subdivision. Tonight, yeah. Some of the residents want something to happen quick. And yeah. Right. It's going to take a little time to even put signs up, but frankly, it's going to if it if the levy passes, 
I think it'll be a long time before they get enough bus drivers and things to actually be able yeah. to store high school buses. I, I, I think you're right. I don't, I don't think that's going to solve the immediate <coughs> problem of no, the parking here. Yeah, I have the same um, fear. If we pushed them far enough away from that entrance, then it might be closer for the walkers to go to Phillips Park. Park. Well, right. And I, even if they're pushed away from the entrance, if some still will use Windy Hill Water, I think most of the safety concerns would be alleviated. It's that stopping and okay. starting and jumping in and out of cars okay. right in that median so, area. So the resistance to Phillips Park really is crossing Rich Road? I it's assume so. It's, it's Rich Road. You, you, you know, if I had my 15-year-old Rich Road and, and it's dismissal time, you've got all those kids pouring out of the high school parking lot to yeah. go to just a flashing lot crosswalk. You know, that's... <laughs> they need a resource yeah. officer less down than, there. That's favorable, right? Uh, I, you know, I, I would say and, that's and, a far more dangerous situation than 15 cars in Chatham Woods. And but, then there's the other issue of if you pick mm -hmm. up your child in Phillips Park, you have to, when you come out of it to Rich Road, you have to turn one direction or the other. Yeah. One's probably yeah, open, and the Chatham other one's congested. Chatham Woods, you're going to have to do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So I think we have a, uh, at least a temporary solution. The nibble solution. That's right. I think, I think, I think it's a good start, certainly. Okay. So do we have... <coughs> thank you. Um, sure. Thank good you, Steve. You. <laughs> Were you all finished, by the way? Yeah, I'm finished. Okay. If, if all right. you have more questions or whatever. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, question for Kim. Do we have... I know you had a couple versions of a resolution teed up. Do we have... Can we doctor one of them to document what we just talked about? Well, to, to deal with Ott's suggestion, I have one for the fire lane, but mm -hmm. it's not, it, it's a bigger area. <clears throat> so I guess we can just But you know, change you just add in the You can add an yeah. exhibit yeah. to it that identifies where the fire yeah. lane is. Right. Yeah. But and we then, can vote on that tonight with yeah. that understanding, right? Of, of the fire lane? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's what Kim is saying. One of them is yeah. already to establish the fire lane. The but description of it might be a little different. Yeah. So you can tweak yeah. that tonight, vote on it, and then the fire lane part can be yeah. And then can be the done sign tonight. part can we do tonight too? Also, yeah. So we're, we want to do signs that are existing up Chatham Woods plus adding signs down to the fire lane. Right? Is that how we're getting it? Okay, when you mean signs, what do you mean? Mm. No parking? <coughs> no stopping or standing 1 to 3 p.m. You'll have to. But townships don't have the authority to have no stopping or standing signs. To have the sign or to enforce the sign? Well, I, I absolutely cannot tell you to put up signs that are not enforceable. Okay. I can tell you but, that the state law allows townships to regulate parking, and I know it feels like we're diving way into the weeds on this, on the difference between parking versus standing, stopping, but it is a difference. The, and the manual on uniform traffic control devices establishes that those are two different things. Okay, so are you saying we can say no parking? Yes. You can... You can erect signs that say no parking. You can make it any day of the week, any time of that. But I think what we've also explained is that what's happening for this short period of time would not be in violation of a no parking sign. See how difficult this is? It's so difficult. Stand no parking. If they're standing, it's right. unenforceable. But if... I was a parent and I had a no parking sign. I wouldn't park there. <laughs> that, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Be, Just waiting for be. my kids. I, uh, what I can tell you is that townships have the authority to regulate parking. You have the authority to erect signs that say no parking. And it can be on certain days, it can be certain times. Um, but I don't want anyone to have the impression that that's going to be that what's happening in this 10 minute 15 minute window is in, is you're not going to be able to knock on windows and say you need to move because there's no parking here because the case law indicates that 
standing or stopping is different and it's not a violation of a no parking sign. So you can put a sign, you can absolutely can put no parking signs up there. And if people read that and think that means they shouldn't stop here to pick up their kids, great. But I, I don't want anyone to think that the sheriff's office is going to be able to, you know, issue citations or move people along because of those signs. And couldn't you move them along? Couldn't you ask them to move? I would not. I would not ask. The, I, I okay. would. Well, first of all, I wouldn't ask them to do anything. They're the sheriff's office. They do what what they do. Okay. Um, but I mean, if they were asking, I mean, no, you. I don't know that they would have a basis to ask somebody to move along when they're not violating any law. Okay. And I guess to get way back to your first question, there are two different versions of, of the resolution that, that were prepared. One was just fire lane and one was no parking signs. Um, I guess I'd go back to the point that your officer just said they haven't seen any safety violations while they've been observing. Right. So we were Steve facing has. This, we're all facing He's this. seen some situations where. Right. So there, so there are. Most days there's, there's no safety violation. Yeah. Occasionally there's, you know, I mean. And it is. To, today I watched nine students walk up the middle of Chatham Woods Drive, all of them in the street, middle of the street. Right. So, but there was no car coming and. So, you know, yeah, and you want kids. your neighborhood they'll, they'll to feel safe. Walk, you know? okay. Yeah, and you want your residents to feel safe. Can so, ask, should we try the can, no parking? Can, can I ask a question, <laughs> Steve? You're, you're on the, uh, let's say, the board, the HOA the board? Association okay. board yes. it, would it be possible for you to do a survey of all your members? And you, I heard earlier that one or two people were really driving this. Well, there's a, yeah, you've probably seen the emails too. There's well, <laughs> some yeah. there's that more are than upset. one or two. I like, I've seen the there's a lot of people that are upset about it. Ken, to be truthful with you, we've done some other things and trying to get some things changed in the homeowner association mm -hmm. covenants and things. We can't get 50% of the people to even respond to us. I, I have the same situation. <laughs> yeah, we know. Well, you know we send stuff to HOAs all the time. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, we tried to get the covenants changed. This is no go. They're the same covenants, same unenforceable covenants that have been in there since the yeah. original developer put them down. Right. Okay. Right. So we, we can't get fifty percent of people to respond to anything. Okay. The only thing they, they tend to respond better on things like this, what they consider negative, than you know voting for a new board member. Right. <laughs> right. So. Okay. I want to back to back to Jeff's point. So I, I hear you loud and clear. Yeah. And yet, right or wrong, we have a situation where the township previously approved some, no, I assume they say no parking, no parking. Right. Eight, eight to one. So we did that, and whether it was supposed to or not, it had a positive effect. Mm -hmm. So well, that's what I'm helped. telling you. I don't know it solved you, everything. You, you absolutely have the authority to erect no parking signs. But those were students that were parking their car and walking across. Yeah. Those yeah, were right. parents. Yeah, they were there all day long. Yeah. That's pro, right. prolonged parking, yeah. Yeah. They were truly parking. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we, we understand that after Kim had sent that explanation to us. Thank you for that. That was helpful. But, you know, we still wanted to come and just let you know what we're dealing with and see if you can help what we understand. Or at least I understand that it's a tough situation to deal with. Uh, so why don't we get the signs instead of what we have now, no parking from... One to three. One to three. And maybe add a couple signs in the beginning. So maybe that'll, like, discourage people. I, I would, my opinion would, that would help. Yeah. How much long-term help? Right. Who knows? And then we can go back and reassess it. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Ken, are and you we on? can say no parking 1 to 3 p.m. or you'll get bad karma. Can yeah. we say that? 
Yeah. Just, just need a bigger sign. Yeah, you can't can say that. Actually, no, you no, can't say that. You can't say that either. <laughs> the man will tell you exactly what the sign has to say. Um, but if I could, just back to the original question, just procedurally, then what I would suggest, and it depends how the trustees want to uh, proceed, what, what we had offered were two sort of alternate resolutions. One was just the fire lane. Yep. The other one was just no parking signs. Mm -hmm. They're both, I think, numbered as what, 114? Yeah, right. Yeah. And the thought was, depending on what happened, you would pick one alternative or the other. Um, I, as a suggestion, and maybe a way to keep things a little cleaner, if you're inclined to, to do the fire lane, then take the 114, that's the fire lane. We can change the description of where of the you know the extent of the fire lane, Just and then you can consider that and adopt it. Okay. Be done. We can't add. You you, you could, but my suggestion is then take that other 114, that's parking, no mm -hmm. parking signs. We'll update the number to whatever the One, next 117. Is. Yeah, make that 117, and then yep. you can decide in that where you want to put no parking signs. <coughs> Rather than try to do both things in one resolution, it may be yep. simpler, especially okay. if at some point you may want to okay. try All right. change it. Okay. Right. Because so what I'm hearing is the fire lane issue from a fire department perspective, that needs to happen no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. on, Agreed. on the rest. Agreed. So that may just be cleaner to <coughs> yeah. do that and then yeah, renumber and the other one. And, and the exhibit shows that it's only I got that. So from the entrance. From the entrance. Oh, okay, I was going to say, can you yep. tell me where? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that can we write perfect. all this down? So this one now becomes 117 oh, and this one stays at That's 114. We're yes. But we're not having um, signs on Windy Hill Court. We're just doing them on Chatham Woods. Well, that's just for the fire lane. Okay, so that no, no, that's for the no parking, parking from one to three on school okay. days, just school days. Mm -hmm. Good, good point. School days. And there, and those that's signs would right? probably only need to go up into nope. your street. It out. wouldn't need to go any further, right? Right. How far would you want the signs on your side? <laughs> One yeah, seventeen is the no park. Uh, just sugar, sugar, sugar wood or seventeen. Or two, just past sugar wood. Yeah, yeah. Sugar on sugar wood. Two sugar wood. wood. Two sugar wood. Yeah. Two sugar wood. Yeah. Okay, you guys get it. It's a very short distance. Yes. Okay. Yeah, between the two. Yeah. I got that. Okay. And then in the resolution of so they will put them two lines. sugar wood. Yeah. Does we that solve the problem? That's okay. And if okay. it doesn't, we'll so where would reassess it and add on. Okay. Um, and at least that'll help for now. Could even be added to those yeah. existing posts? Yes. Okay. So okay. It, the fire lane or the no parking, <laughs> one to three. Okay, you might have to help me. Right. No parking, one to three. And one to three school days and then when it comes to the fire lane you do you have a distance how far how high you want those yeah we just do it on the you so i don't have to read that so that the first one is 117 establish right no parking lanes on township road that's the fire lane you're going to hand it I understand. <laughs> okay. When we're, right when we're ready. Are we going to do it now or are we going to wait till we get to that point? Let's just do it now. Do it now. Okay. The exhibit that I have that <laughs> so it can be done in, only an hour and a half later. <laughs> the exhibit that was passed back in 2014 shows no parking from Rich all the way down to Park Court. And both sides, or I'm sorry, on Sugarwood and part of Sleepy Ridge. So, did you want to do the same, but do it on both sides of just Chatham Woods Drive? I don't, I don't, I don't think you push it that far, do you? I'm just saying that's yeah. what your resolution that you passed in 2014. That's what it right. says. So you want the the it's no gonna, parking because the of the fire, fire lane, lanes from the fire lane to <laughs> how far up? They have the amount, and then no, she's talking about what is in there now. The, the no parking resolution. resolution. The no parking resolution goes from Richmond. 
road all the way to so Park Court. So it goes all the way to the back end of the neighborhood. Okay. So right. do we want We're not those changing that. signs okay. changed? No. Right now they're only on the north side of Chatham Woods. And then you've got one lone sign that's like right near the corner of Windy Hill Court and Chatham Woods. So what I'm asking is, do you want to do mirror signs on Chatham Woods Drive only from Park Court to the fire lane? Hmm. Or do you want to do the same thing that is in this resolution that you passed in 2014? Yeah, that's too many signs. So well, don't I don't know there would be any more than you have today. You just have to change them out if that's what the resolution says. But you'd have to do but, them on both sides, and we don't have them on both sides yeah, at this we point. Have them on one side. So then well, you would have signs on, on both sides. On the <laughs> side. Right. Here, this and it was just. No, it's, or, it's, yeah, no, it's closer to sugar. It's closer to sugar yeah. one. So you only want signs, no parking, one to three, <laughs> on Chatham Woods on both sides to Sugarwood. Well. The, the reason what Kim was saying, I think, makes, write some, this out makes some so sense to right. keep that resolution the same because if there was no signs up there, theoretically, students could start coming back and right. parking there again, which has been eliminated with the existing signs. Right. So I would leave the resolution the same because right. that other past park court, that's another dead end on the right hand side that goes up to the youth football field, which is part of the Sleepy Ridge. Right. And Kids could start parking there again, and then we'd be back to a problem we've okay, already so solved. Just, just leave the 2014 alone. Okay. And put the new 2022-117 as specifically what we want to do now, which I think you're saying is Chatham Woods I'm back confused. so far. <laughs> yeah, but how, how far back should so we, we go? So we put two signs on the one post. Do we have the it, it could be. I mean, probably going to solve this problem if you go back to Sugarwood or to Park Court. They're they're close. Park is way in the back, when isn't it? I was there, just a little bit farther west to, okay. to the, on the other side. When I was there, I was just past Sugarwood Court. Okay. Sugarwood Court, and there was nobody near me. I mean, it was the parking was occurring. Yeah, they, they some of them turn around in Sugarwood and come back down and, and get in do. line. And I have witnessed a lot of people. I think a lot of right. parents. Uh, teen drivers, so they'll pick their kids up at the school, drive into the subdivision, pull into Sugarwoods, and I noticed the, the fire truck, like the, what do you Chinese call that? Yes, the Chinese <laughs> fire girl. So the parent gets out, goes to one side, the kid comes around the other, and then, and then they drive out. I did notice a couple of that going on, and I was there. Okay. So no parking from Sugarwood Court to the fire lane. Okay, why don't you good, read these since you step. understand it? Okay. You can let him handle this. Both sides right. of the street? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 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 Um, and I, I'm sorry for that. These are not numerical. I'm just going to take them top to bottom. So I, I, um, I move. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. I forgot what the words were. I move approval resolution G2022-117. Resolution establishing no parking lanes on Chatham Woods Drive between Sugarwood Court to fire uh, to the fire lane, which we're going to approve next. Specifically, the sign will read no parking one to three p.m. school days. And Second. This is both sides of Chatham. Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck? Aye. Ms. Lease? Aye. I move approval resolution G2022-114, resolution establishing fire lanes on Chatham Woods Drive. And we have a diagram that defines the location. Sounds good. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck? Aye. Ms. Lease? Aye. Mr. Bryan? Aye. Okay, so okay. hopefully that solves the problem. If it doesn't solve the problem, now, just I'm, let us know and we'll take another stand like at it. I'd like to think that we can take some of these signs down if everything goes away after the right. levy passes. Right. Yes. Okay. That'd be nice. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much for your okay. time and all your consideration and reading all these <laughs> Thank emails. You. Thank you, welcome. Steve. You're Thanks, welcome. John. Thank you, Scott. Thank it was appreciate nice you yeah. coming. Seeing everybody and all right, so moving on. <laughs> I, I move approval of disbursements warrant number 81900 to 82073 and vouchers 248 to 284 in the amount of $868,903.48. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Uh, reports, Law Director. Uh, thank you. I thought that I, I have a pretty lengthy report on parking regulations. So I thought it might be <laughs> not tonight anymore. Uh, but given what we've just done, no report tonight. Okay. Thank you, police. I uh, just wanted to say thanks for providing the candy last night. I to the guys that were passing it out, and they were thrilled uh, meeting all the kids. And uh, based on what I saw from what Mr. Pittman uh, provided, there must have been a lot of excited kids because it was a good spread. So good. That's thanks. Awesome. Good. Thank you for going. Out. Uh, thank you, board. Uh, we have a couple items on the agenda later on, but um, you have my written report. Okay. Um, Public Works, Bill's not here. Committee, the uh, Finance Committee met October 12, 2022. Um, no other. Hearing from residents. <laughs> Yay! Come on up. Thank you. Wow, what a first meeting. <laughs> but you can't wait for next meetings. month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> sort of introduce myself. I'm Elizabeth Sullivan. I am the new senior branch manager at the Sims Township Public Library. So um, I just wanted to come and put a face to kind of what we're doing over there. Um, just remind you of some of the wonderful things that we're doing for the community here. We do have passport um, appointments available um, five days a week to all residents. So we can process and do renewals for little ones for that. We're still handing out free COVID tests. Um, at our drive through window, and we are at the beginning stages of revamping our parking lot. Um, anyone that's ever been to our library before knows it's kind of a headache. It's like one way in and the same way out. It will go all the way around the building here soon, and we're getting a sizable building addition um, sometime next year oh, as well. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, all the fines I've You'll paid. have to come to our public uh, our public hearings well, when we get to that. After point. all the fines I've paid. <laughs> well, we're fine for forever now at I the know <laughs> I know I've been enjoying it <laughs> good so yeah any so questions we I can love answer? the library at Sims we <laughs> have um, reading programs during the summer yes. in our parks yes. so we're happy if you have any ideas that you want to wonderful work with us we'd love to work with yes you. that mm -hmm. sounds great I'll definitely be reaching out um, one of our goals coming into the next year is to make sure that we're way more visible out in the community and in all of Sims Township instead of just staying centralized kind of where our building is so um, I look forward to working okay, with awesome. all of you and you have your story walk yeah. oh yeah we have story yeah. walk mm -hmm. yes yeah. we do yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming, Elizabeth. And sorry it took so long. No, no, you're fine. Okay. We don't have anyone else here. So correspondence, events and meeting, Veterans Day, all township buildings will be closed for the holiday Friday, November 11th, 2022. We have Thanksgiving this month. All township buildings will be closed for the holiday Thursday and Friday, November 24th and 25th, 2022. Um, Christmas light recycling program that starts Monday, November 28th through January 31st, 2023 at the administration building. We have Mary and Bright Contest Thursday, December 1st through December 16th, 2022. Winners will be announced at our meeting on December 19th, 2022. Um, Operation Santa, Saturday, December 3rd, 2022 from 5 to 8.30. Board of Zoning Appeals is Monday, December 5th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Administration Building. Regular Trustee Minutes, Tuesday, December 6th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Administration Building. We have no old business, uh, new business, discussion concerning investment. How much money um, do we transfer from <coughs> meters for short-term investments? That would be you. Excuse me. Would that be you? <laughs> Who wants to talk? <laughs> um, you don't uh, have to stay. Uh, my, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh. Uh, my, my opinion is that we could move some money from the 
uh, checking account into the meter account. Um, one of the things that I'm reminded of by Ms. Lipinski is that uh, we have some big ticket items coming up um, and it's a legitimate concern. You know, we have a new fire truck coming up soon and uh, I don't know what all those total. I, I still think we have enough of a cushion that we could move some money over, but it has to be in a uh, fashion that does not tie it up long term because of the unknowns that are going on in our economy right now. Um, the unknowns with invested monies that's going on right now. So although I do think we can move some, I would want to, I would be happier about it if it's in short-term investments rather than anything long-term. Would it be smarter to wait till like the 1st of January to talk about this? It doesn't matter. I mean, like I recommended in my staff report that we move two million, but we only do it in a short-term investment and not tie it up for many years yeah. at the time. Okay. Okay. But you also had a number out there as expected or anticipated interest. Okay. Is that reasonable? Aren't we limited in how we can invest? From what he told us, it is. I mean, I'm not an investment oh, no, counselor. I, okay, that's a that's number why that we you got out of the finance committee. I was surprised meeting. at that okay. figure. Yeah. All right. Huh. So do you, well, are I you recommending we do I know it? that we're paying yeah, a heck of a lot more we interest, so we ought to be able to get a lot more All interest. All right, so should the number be $2 million? I think so. What do you think? Yeah, but I'll bring a resolution at the next meeting, and then okay. we'll do it by resolution. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on. Um, I move to schedule a special meeting to discuss the mean house renovation and park fees. Does anybody have a, do we want to do it this month? Do we want to do it next month? Do we want to do it the first of the year? I think December is pretty tough to do. Okay. So you might might look at this month, even though there are holidays and things in there. Um, what's anybody think? Um, it obviously can't be the week of Thanksgiving if you want to do that. So that takes that away. So Phil, what's your schedule? You want to look at the week of the 14th? In November? Mm -hmm. Tuesday the 15th? Um, I think I can do Tuesday the 15th. That's, I've got a lot of things going on right now with uh, doctor's appointments and things like that. that if you could push it, well, the next week is Thanksgiving, so that's tough. Yeah, my daughter's in town, and I haven't seen her in a while, so I don't want to do it that week. Well, you can go ahead and schedule it, and I'll make it if I can. It's just depending on whether I can get there. I mean, does, um, that week after Thanksgiving, the week of the 28th. Yeah. So it could be like that, the 29th. I think that would be better for me, actually. The 29th? Yeah, I should get okay. get over the hump here on a lot of different things going on, so. How early can we do it, Phil? Um, <laughs> Me and Ken would be here at three. <laughs> six. six. Is that okay, Ken? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I move to schedule the meeting November 29th at 6 p.m. And here? Yeah. Do I have a second? Okay. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. I move to not request a hearing for Sanders Ventures, INC, Deshays, American Tavern, and Patio 11320 Montgomery Road, Sims Township, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45249. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. I move to set a public hearing date for December 6th at 7.05 p.m. for a zone change application received to change the zoning from A residential to DD plan multi-residential residence where the applicant plans <coughs> to construct a 20-unit townhome. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. 
I move to authorize the Township Administrator to advertise for request for a statement of qualification to build a new maintenance garage for the Public Works Department. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Bryant? Aye. Mr. Beck? Aye. Ms. Lease? Aye. I move approval of Resolution G-2022-108, Resolution authorizing the Township Administrator to sign an agreement with Burnham and Flower for F. S.A. benefits for the elected official employees of Sims Township. Second. Discussion? Yes, for second. Uh, this is additional, isn't it? This is F.S.A. It's not yeah. H.R.A. or any of no, that that we're be, already paying for. This would be an additional cost. So it's okay. additional three fifty per person per month. Any, per month, yes. depending on how many people participate. Okay. But we did have some um, asks from some of the employees okay. who want to defer some of their own money into an account and it can be used to pay for like eyeglasses and yeah. other medical items that are not covered under the okay. health insurance. So evidently they have experience with FSAs that you use it or lose it? Yes, and you okay. can roll over up to $570 a year with an FSA now. Oh, okay, it's new. And it's yeah. this is tax, non-tax. Non-tax. That's so right, that's why it's a benefit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Roll call? Mr. Beck? Aye. Ms. Lease? Aye. Mr. Bryan? Aye. I move approval of Resolution G-2022-109, Resolution authorizing the Township Administrator to enter an agreement with the State of Ohio Department of Transportation and the Board of Township Trustees for Sims Township to maintain the landscaping in the central meetings along U.S. Route 22 located with Hamilton County from Kemper Road to Mason Montgomery Road. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. I move approval of resolution G2022-110, resolution authorizing the township administrator to purchase additional playground equipment from Pencher LLC for Seven Gables in the amount of $14,915. Second. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Bryant. Um, I keep I've read, I read the staff report and this is something that was left off of the original estimate. Is that all I did? Yep. And it's all part of the, the plan that was put out? Yeah, so we, what we did was we kind of approved, we kind of took a path that was down the middle of that and everything on the one side of it, and these benches were kind of like left off of the estimate okay. by accident. So they're between the swings and that Got big it. I, Yeah, uh, I read that. So we only have so much money, so we're breaking this project up into pieces. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm done. Okay, roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. I move approval of, <coughs> I move approval of resolution G2022-111, resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter an agreement with Televac Environmental INC to perform repairs to stormwater pipe in Union Cemetery in the amount of $12,200. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. I move approval of resolution G2022-112, resolution to amend fees for application and other procedures under the Sims Township Zoning Resolution. Second. Discussion? Um, yeah, this is I this mean, is the 5% increase. I mean, yeah, we will be getting a 5.1% increase from Hamilton County for the zoning for fees. Right. So in turn, I think we should raise our fees from 5.1%. Okay, but uh, are we taking in enough to cover that right now? Yeah, we are. Okay, well, a few years ago we weren't. Right. So my question was, is this an appropriate time to raise it 6% or instead of 5.1%? Yeah, that's all. But if we're making, if we're paying everything off, we'll get to, what's coming in goes out. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with it. Okay. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. I move approval of Resolution G-2022-113, Resolution authorizing the Township Administrator to purchase solar power flashing pedestrian signs for crosswalks at various locations in the amount of $30,070.88. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lee. Aye. I lost my next page. 
I think it was in the Here. discussion of, well, <laughs> of, of all the chatter boards. <laughs> okay, yeah. yes, I got that. I, I move approval of resolution G2022-115, resolution authorizing the township administrator to purchase retrofit solar power flashing pedestrian lights for crosswalks at Hopewell and Humphrey Road in the amount of $8,635. Second. Discussion? They'll be glad to hear that. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. I move approval of resolution G2022-116, resolution authorizing the purchase of new township fire engine from Stefan in, the amount, Stefan in the amount of $663,867. Second. Phil Dis got it. Discuss discussion? Roll call? Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Aye. Now, it's going to take us few years to get this right right yeah, so I what we're doing is freezing the price okay because I know how fast those things go up okay Okay. Which one's it going to replace? One in here? The, the engine is up at the uh, Chapel Square Station. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chapel Square Station. Oh. Thank you. I mean, that, that goes back a ways, right. doesn't it? So the one thing that we will have to decide later on is how we pay for it. Right now we have it tied up in appropriations, but you guys can decide later if you want to borrow money, if you want to lease it, or if you just want to outright pay for it, or we can break it up into multiple years of paying for it. We do have that option. And if, if our TIF comes in, we still have license to use that for this type of equipment. Right, right. So, now I have so we, have, we have options. Yeah, I have okay. the TIF and the safety services levy. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Um, Mr. Bryan. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. I move approval of following expenditures and authorization for the township administrator to sign any necessary contracts, agreements, or paperwork. A. Expenditure six thousand for Haddock's tree service to remove six large trees at eight 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 seven Weekly Lane. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. I move to go into executive section OR. Session ORC Section 121.22G1 um, to consider the compensation and employment of a public employee or official. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. I, I may have an issue. All right. 